Hey guys, thank you for joining me again here at Completing Christ as uh, we can continue to look through this passage in Joshua where Joshua says, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And we're doing a little series entitled, It's Time Time to Decide. You know, that's Joshua's message to the children of Israel, to the people that he was leading, is that you got to decide. And the time is now. Can I tell you that the time's now? We need to decide. You know, the, the challenge to the people that Joshua was talking to is that you've allowed false gods to come into your life. He says, actually, they've been passed down from the previous generations. And you say one thing with your mouth, but you live another way. As we'll see as we get a little bit further into this passage. He says, look, it's one thing to say you're going to serve the Lord, but I just don't want to hear you say it. I want to see you do it. And I tell you, it's time that we serve the Lord. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means. And uh, as we look at this passage, I'm going to go back and read verses four, verse 14 one more time and then remind you what the end of verse 15 says. Verse 14, chapter 24 of Joshua, verse 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth. And that's we're going to look at that second phrase today a little bit. You know, we, we've looked at that fear of the Lord and what that means. That Joshua says, look, I'm challenging you to serve the Lord. You need to start by fearing him. You need to give him his, pop, his proper place. You need to understand that he's worthy of respect. He's worthy of reverence. A reverence that leads to honor and that leads to obedience. And I think we miss that sometimes. That, that we'll say that we fear the Lord. We'll say that we love the Lord. But oftentimes our actions say something else. You see, to fear the Lord is to live life respecting him because of his worth and having this, this adoration for him and what he's done for me that leads me to obedience. And then he says, you need to stand in awe of him. Man, you need to stand in awe of his grandeur. You need to stand in awe of his power. And we spent the last time talking about having a better understanding of who he is and what he's done and what he's capable of doing. And I know I did not do a good, uh, a good explanation of that, but because he's really hard to describe because he's so powerful, he's so big that oftentimes that we try to describe him in human terms and we lessen who he really is. But I think one of the biggest things in our culture today is that, that we've, we've often made him into who we want him to be instead of who he really is. And Joshua says, look, you need to fear him. You need to stand in awe of who he is and his worth and his grandeur. You need to bow and say, God, look, look, because of who you are, what you've done and what you're capable of doing, I'm going to live my life in respect and reverence to you, which means... It will lead me to surrender and obedience. And then he says this. Then he says, look, you need to serve him. You need to serve the Lord. You need to serve him, but you need to serve him in sincerity and in truth. And as you look at that word serve, it comes from a word that means service or labor, but it's more than that. It's more than just service. It's more than just labor. The, the picture there is when the focus of the labor or the service is the Lord, that it becomes a service of worship. You see, it's, 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 it's me living life surrendered to the Lord, to, to Yahweh, to the one true God, to the one that I am, who I say I am, to the point that when I serve, what I'm actually doing is my service is an act of worship to a holy and a righteous, righteous God. You see, service becomes worship because it's an overflow of my love relationship with the Lord, that, that I do what I do because I love. I do what I do because I love Jesus. I do what I do because I love people. Because I love the Lord, he gives me a love for people. I serve the Lord because I love him. And because of this relationship, that's just overflow coming out of me that leads me to serve. And that service is an act of worship unto the Lord. 
that I don't do what I do because I have to do what I do. I do what I do because I get to do what I do because I love. I want you to think about your service. Is your service to the Lord an act of worship? You see, it becomes an act of worship when it's an overflow of my love relationship with Jesus, of my love relationship with the Lord. And I, I serve because I get to, because I love, not because I have to. You see, he says, serve with sincerity, serve with truth. The word sincerity means to be honest, to be real, to be genuine, not fake, not just something I do and not just going through the motion, not for self gain, not to be noticed, but all for his glory. You see that I serve with sincerity, that I don't just go through the motions when I do it. Man, I, I got to thinking about that, man, as I was studying this, how many times in my life have I done what I've done because it was something I had always done or something that I thought I was supposed to do, even, even as, as pastor, uh, even as a preacher, that oftentimes you just get in this routine and you get in this rut and you just do it because you do it and that's what people expect of you. No, no, no. It needs to be service as an overflow of my love relationship with the Lord. And I do it, I do it because I want to bring him glory. I want my service, what I'm doing, to be an act of worship that glorifies him above all else. Why? Because he's worthy of that. He's worthy of being glorified. He's worthy of adoration and honor and obedience. And Man, God says, go. I go because I love him, not because I have to. And that service becomes an act of worship unto the Lord. And people are blessed. And God is glorified. He says, do it in truth. You know, that do it by God's standard. Do it according to God's word. Man, serve him and worship him based on the truth of his holy standard. You know, there's two things I can tell you today that I know are true. And that's Jesus, who is the living truth and, his word, and God's word. Man, you know, Joshua tells the people here, look, man, you need to serve him. But your service don't just need to be something you do because you do it. Why you do what you do? Because that's what's expected of you? Because that's what you have always done? Are you, or is it an overflow of your love relationship with Jesus? Therefore, your service is an act of worship that brings him honor and it brings him glory because it's according to his holy standard. You know, worship is an act of, a, of attributing reverence and honor to God. It's bowing before him, whether it be physically or on the inside. It's magnifying him alone. We worship to bring him much, much glory. And I serve as an act of worship to glorify him and to make him known. Is your serving the Lord an act of worship? that is glorifying God and making him known. See, that's the challenge to the people. Man, you trust the Lord. You serve the Lord. That Let what you do be an overflow of your honor and your respect for him. Therefore, he's glorified, he's made known, and people are blessed. I pray that we would be men and women who fear the Lord, who stand in awe of the Lord, and who serve the Lord as an act of worship because of our relationship with him. And we love him, we want to honor him, we want to serve him, and we want to worship him. I hope you have a blessed day, and let Jesus be Jesus in you today. Thank you so much for watching Complete in Christ as we strive to teach you about the Christ life. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and may you have a blessed day walking with Jesus.